Bienvenue à Paris. Right now, we are met with a dilemma that strikes every single tourist that comes here. We are in the beautiful hilly area of Montmartre, right here in Paris. The highest point in Paris is actually right up there. But here we have two choices. The thing is, these two choices actually were the same choices that John Wick was met with in the last John Wick movie, John Wick 4, played by Keanu Reeves. He had a battle to ensue all the way on the very top of Montmartre. I won't tell you any more details about what happens in the movie, but lo and behold, he has to go up these staircases in order to battle the henchmen. Not working at that time. So he ended up going up the stairs. Let me know, which one would you choose? Would you go up? right here on the funicular or, or funicular as they say in French or would you go up the stairs which one shall you choose Rami says I still remember last year's Mont Blanc video <laughs> it's not quite Mont Blanc unfortunately uh, we're not going that high <laughs> this ride is pretty short, but the line is very long. I think it costs around three euros. Here's the tickets if you have a Navigo pass. Uh, if you're a frequent traveler to Paris, do get a Navigo pass. It'll be a lot easier to get up. But as you can see, it's a pretty short ride up. So, last year I did take the vehicle all the way up, but this year, we're going to get into the spirit of John Wick. If you haven't seen John Wick 4, even if you haven't seen any of the first three ones, I highly recommend seeing number four. If you love Paris, you'll love John Wick 4. Most of the movie takes place in Paris and the crazy action sequences ensue in the city of love and lights. Uh, but for John Wick, it becomes a city of violence. And <laughs> it's quite a fun movie. And I love the action sequence that they did here on the staircase. Most unique action sequence I've seen on a staircase since Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. So we're gonna get in the spirit of John Wick and also burn those calories from all those pastries from the last video and go up. Hopefully we will meet as much resistance as uh, poor Keanu did in the movie. Roy says, I'll put in a, a, a lone vote for the stairs. <laughs> Indeed. Oh my God, I'm not sure how that guy's not sliding off because Keanu definitely slid off many times in that action sequence. He just rolled down like three times. Lori says, do stairs, but two at a time. You know, two at a time may tire you out. Oh, this guy is good. I wonder if this guy trained Keanu because he's doing he's doing he's doing these stairs like a champ. Wow. Let's check out the funicular. Here it goes. Oh, I love these type of vehicles. More cities should install them. I mean, we really don't need them in New York because we don't really have hills in New York. <laughs> um, we should install them, definitely. In other cities like San Francisco. Seattle could definitely use some of these. I love that this is run by the actual uh, transit authority of Paris barely anyone going back down on them almost everyone's going up on them i wonder why i mean isn't this so much fun to just climb stairs ladies and gentlemen like up not down up isn't it so much fun like it's the best thing ever let me know Bonjour. <laughs> Yeah, I kept this 
wait for this family to pass. I climb stairs pretty fast. <laughs> Hey, Maurice says they conserve energy to use at the church. The hills are alive in the, sa in the hills of Paris. Indeed they are. Oh, no. All right, I'm gonna... I can't walk this slow. I gotta go my New York pace. <laughs> Hello, George. Welcome. Nice to see you here. So relaxing climbing upstairs. I love them. Isn't it the best activity in the world, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> you could go for a beer stop on the way here, which is awesome. And if you love John Wick 4, I will show you the location of the duel. <laughs> Susie says I will need my asthma inhaler. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Look at this. Actually, let me show you down the stairs before we explore more. So in the movie, it's really well shot. And it's on location. He rolls down the stairs a few times. Poor Keanu. The man is a champ. Meta says, I want a, a beer, a French one, not a Irish one. Yeah. Yeah, French beers are pretty good. My favorite of all time is the Mont Blanc Brewery. Oh my god. And behold. The views of Paris. Look at this. Here's the optical illusion that people take. If you move the camera at a specific angle, it'll look like the land is tilted. Not so this was the view where, in the movie, John Wick, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me know if you still see me and hear me. There's a little bit of a uh, uh, tough service up here uh, because of all the people. So we took uh, the more direct route on the stairs, but the more indirect scenic route is right over here around the same elevation where we started. But right now we are in the highest point, natural point in Paris within the city limits. I think the highest architectural point might be uh, Montparnasse right down there. And look at the stunning views. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. One of the beautiful monuments we visited last year, the French Pantheon. This is the tower that stunned the nation, Montparnasse. Tour de Montparnasse. Mm -hmm. 
stunned them because they were horrified by this uh, huge monolithic black steel and glass skyscraper cropping up in the beautiful city of Paris. So much so that they banned most skyscrapers here. Uh, and most skyscrapers are relegated to the other side, outside the city in limits in La Défense. With the exception of these uh, newer uh, high rises that are in the industrial area of Paris. Tanya says, last year wasn't as busy. Yeah, you know, they were still checking the vaccine last year. So I don't think that maybe as many people were traveling last year. Uh, but now uh, there's no restrictions to come to France, as far as I know, at least for Americans and Europeans. So that's down where we started. Nola from Alabama, welcome. Eli, it's nice to see you here. Let's zoom in on the apartments over here. Look at these beautiful zinc mansard rooftops here, Harris. Zinc was used because it was cheap. Also, grayish zinc. And also the lighter stone that they used, which is actually right below Paris. A lot of the stone that's used here is from the quarries that are nowadays the catacombs. And right there we see the Pompidou, another controversial museum building here in Paris, kind of looking more like a factory than a actual beautiful Parisian museum. Pompidou is the Museum of Modern Art. Meta says I'm, I'm spotting a, a, a cool home here. Yeah, I don't blame you. So right here, it's very, very, very packed, uh, and it's super touristy. So, unfortunately, here is uh, where a lot of pickpockets like to target tourists uh, that are not really fully aware of the surroundings. So, here I would recommend, uh, if you don't have a backpack, use the front pocket, not the back one. Hey, Morgan says, celebrates 20 months of membership. Hey, Morgan, thank you so much for being a member for so long. Appreciate you. I think uh, Chinese and Korean tourists are coming back. So that's why it's getting extra full. Ron says, yeah, more stairs, the best kind of stairs. Tough service here, so let me know. We'll see me and hear me.
Inkspire Life is asking, is it prime tourist season right now? Um, not quite. We're still in early May. Um, I think a lot of kids in college start getting out this first week of May, so not yet. I think very soon you might start seeing the even more tourists. I'm not entirely sure what Oh my! <laughs> what is this? Now, there's a line now I think to get into the church Susan says great workout indeed it is yeah wow so here we have Sacre Coeur in this is the Basilica of Paris Paris, like France, still Catholic country, mostly. And this was built right after, well, this is built for two reasons. The patron saint of Paris is Saint-Denis. Um, and Saint-Denis is usually depicted with him, no head, carrying his head. And apparently Saint-Denis Many, 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 many centuries ago was uh, persecuted for various reasons and then off with his head down in the main city of Paris back then, probably the medieval city, which was Ile de la Cité area. And he apparently came still walking with his uh, headless body, carrying his head all the way up here to the top of Mont Blanc. And this is where he's uh, like sanctified. And then the second reason is, this was also the very bloody area of the Paris Commune. It was one of those revolutions, but uh, this revolution was, went, descended into pure anarchy to the point where the military was up here pointing cannons in order to defend the city, but they weren't attacking the city, of course, because the military did not want to attack its own uh, citizens. But it descended to so much chaos that the revolutionaries, more, more so our anarchists, came up here, took over the cannons, ousted the military from here, and started shooting the cannons back down into the city. It was one of the worst, bloodiest uh, battles in Parisian history. So after that bloodshed, the Catholic Church also decided to sanctify it by building here, Sacre Corps, that we see today. I'm shocked by the lines here. I'm shocked how uh, packed it is. I came here uh, last year twice, uh, both in uh, June and then in August. And nowhere near as many people. Destroyer says, great video. Thank you so much, Destroyer, for tuning in. Is that the line to get inside? I think it might be, and I'm, I'm frankly very shocked. So, uh, I ran into a friend downstairs that she was showing uh, to a couple from Orlando that are visiting Paris for the first time. And I told them to go inside the church, and that it usually looks like there's a line in front, but it's not. 
<laughs> and in this case, I think uh, I'm wrong uh, because I never saw a line in front of the church. But yep, this is indeed the line to get inside the church. Crazy long. I think it's because they're doing the security check right in front. If you want to enjoy uh, Paris touristically, come before the Olympics or after the Olympics, do not come during. Uh, it might be madness. If you're into sports, then come for the Olympics. But otherwise, yeah, I, you're, you're going to have a tough time seeing a lot of these attractions. Have patience if you come here during the Olympics. Maybe there's something special inside. Well, this weekend is a holiday weekend as well here in Paris. Victory Day is on Monday. So maybe, but I doubt it. A lot of these people see it seem to be tourists. So I don't think there's anything particularly special with the church this summer. But it is a gorgeous church, that's for sure. There's a huge um, building in the middle of Cavalry Cemetery in New York City that actually is built the same way as Sacre Coeur, just a bit smaller. Paul says dark, heavy, dark Parisian clouds is usually heavy rain in Liverpool. Yeah, you know, Paris, I noticed it gets cloudy, but sometimes it does not rain. So this is one of the many tours that you'll see in Paris on these uh, beetle bugs. Great way to see Paris. There's a one hour version, there's a two hour version. Guy in accordion playing what sounds to me to be one of the songs from Amelie. Whitney says, where are the riots? I think the tourists have overrun the rioters over here. Hey, Lane, Zane says, go to uh, Sydney, Australia, please. I would love to go to Sydney, Australia. Uh, let me know where the travel regulations now in Sydney. Pigeon pooped on me next to the carousel at the bottom of the stairs, says Maurice. Uh, that's good luck, Maurice. I bet you had the best of luck that week.
Janice, nice to see you here. Welcome. Janice says, bad Wi-Fi. Yeah, there's just way too many people here, I think. Uh, that might be the case why the Wi-Fi is shaky. Destroyer says the name of the uh, those uh, Beetlebug uh, rides. Let me know the official name of the actual vehicle. It's called the 2CV Citron. C Citron, yeah, I think that might be the pronunciation. Christine says, I was had no idea you were going to France. <laughs> Indeed I am. In France. Viva la France. Du Cheval Citron, says uh, Chris. That was the name of the, those uh, car rides. Hey, Kay says, this is the paradise for pickpuckers. Yes, that's why I recommend it, everyone. If you have a bag with you, have your purse, uh, have a crossbody, and then uh, just for ease of mind, put your wallet. And if you're not taking a lot of photos with your phone, put your phone in there as well in the bag, deep inside, not in the front pocket because that's also another target area. He'll be okay, no one, uh, there's not really too much reports of violence ever, but if you'll avoid pickpocketing, just be smart. So here we have the full cafes, people drinking, chatting. Now, as I mentioned many live streams before, these tables, you don't see any table setting. No uh, utensils. You can immediately sit down. You don't need to speak with the host to sit down. Uh, and these tables are generally okay to just order a drink and a coffee or whatever you would like to sit down, relax. They don't really care if you only spend two euros on a coffee, 250. Oh, beautiful artist. No photo. Gorgeous. Christine sent 200 stars. Thank you so much, Christine. See you play. I mean, Messi. So beautiful paintings by real artists. Uh, they are painting as we speak. So this is not just uh, mass rep reproduction prints. There's nothing wrong with prints, but sometimes touristy places around the world sell prints for way too expensive but here they're actually drawing it it's awesome how much do they charge for a portrait let's see if i can spot a price let's see 10 euro not portrait but one of those little paintings 10 euro euros you ten. Yeah, ten. okay let me see all ten. Oh, wow. and this ten. Ten. okay okay magnifique Merci beaucoup. Bonne journée. Thank you. All right. Yeah, beautiful paintings. I got myself a souvenir. I didn't want uh, one on the canvas because it would be too much to carry. But I got this one right here. I'm not sure what it says. Let's see. Someone can translate for me. 
It's beautiful. I like it. More stunning ones. Wow, beautiful. Chris has so many fake painters in Rome, but these ones seem legit. Yeah, these ones seem legit. It's nice. That guy, uh, you saw his hands. He had uh, a lot of paint on his hands, so he was just painting them. Inkspire Light says, I would love to be an artist here. You can. It doesn't seem to just be Parisians here. You see people from all walks of life. Let's retire from being a teacher. Thanks for our life. Leave your life in New Jersey. Come over here. <laughs> you you won't be the only American. Thanks for our life, uh, because <laughs> some of uh, very famous Americans in our art history have come here and um, and uh, lived the rest of their days in Paris. Ernest Hemingway. Uh, let me know or the other famous ones. Gutrud Stein. Now this guy is painting a really good portrait. You paid too much for it. So 10 minute portrait it says here. Let's see how much they're charging. Oh, they're painting the man and the woman, the couple. That's cool. Maurice says, I hope you can visit Lyon on one of your trips. Maurice, you were in luck because I went to Lyon last year. Um, you can look at those older live videos and short videos as well. to pay with bills of different sizes and Andrew, good question uh, i think the euro now is all the same size uh i have not encountered euros to be different sizes i think that's the case let me know where that's the case or at least the sizes are not too discernible they are different colors though MZ says, I have a portrait done here about 20 years ago. Ooh, MZ, do you still have it? What language do you hear aside from French? Let's see. A lot of French, I think. There was a group speaking... Um, that combination of Hindi with uh, English. I've heard Spanish in general. Some Italian. I've heard Portuguese. I heard that a little bit earlier. And um, what appears to me, they're Mandarin, Cantonese as well. 1,300 stars sent during the, the star party. Hey, thank you everyone for the stars. Did you choose the location of your Urbanist Cafe yet? <laughs> This would be. This might be a bit too packed and touristy for the Urbanist Cafe. Uh, if I were to open one in Paris, uh, where would it be? That's a good question. Not more, more but it's a bit too crazy here. Uh, I would go more down. Susie says the portraits looks so good have yours done <laughs> you know I've never been too much of a fan of being portraits done oh Andre says yeah there's a slight a slight 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 size difference in the in the bills, yeah. It's not really that discernible. I can't really tell the difference. Excuse me. Sorry. Pardon. 
<laughs> Susie says they'll hold the rifle. <laughs> So here we see tablecloths, table setting. You cannot just sit. You have to talk to the host or the waiter in order to sit. Now, when it comes to a lot of French restaurants, you always say the plat du jour, the meal, the dish of the day. I will recommend usually ordering those. Those tend to be the what they're making really good that day. It tends to be really stand out. Janice says, a friend of mine is going to Paris, so I told her to watch my videos. Oh, glad, yeah. Doing well in beautiful Europe. Ron says a bench test. I haven't seen one yet to sit on. Sally, nice to see you here. Welcome to the broadcast. Is the art festival here all year long? I think it's not really a festival. I think the artists are just generally here. The bar, the low bar of Paris is still higher than the average bar in the U.S. when it comes to food. So generally you have good food anywhere. If you're really hungry, you can eat these places. But otherwise, just go away from... Enough. Uh, Paris has, proportionally speaking to New York, like three or four times, five times more restaurants uh, per person. It's crazy. It's a huge amount of restaurants. Uh, so you generally find just good food everywhere. Just if you're in the tourist area, walk a few blocks out. If the menu is only in French, it's a pretty good indicator. That place is good enough. Chirag says, any plans to visit Montparnasse? You know, I'm very tempted to go to Montparnasse. Uh, the tower, very tempted. <laughs> wow, here we have a bouchon, <laughs> but not, not what appears to be an authentic bouchon as we see in, uh, in Lyon. For people who don't know, Bouchon is a classic Leonese uh, restaurant. Lyon is the second or right now the third biggest city in, in France. Oh, beautiful little restaurant, look at that. Gorgeous. I do hear a lot of French, so I, there might be a lot of domestic tourists here. Uh, good deal. All right, time to pick. Thank you. 
So I got a set of five, I got a set of eight, which is a total of um, 13, cost me 20 euro. Sometimes you'll find unique postcards. Paris is really good, post uh, has great postcards. Um, there's not that many cities with great postcards. Paris, Seattle has so far been the top two cities with great postcards. London is a third. that's playing I probably I may get copyrighted with this guy but it's worth it because he's playing some great French chansons which is like the French ballads and uh, the guy did not have uh, French beer which is a bit of a shame so I ended up getting just a Negroni so let's enjoy a Negroni here in Paris Says I just ordered a stelato. No, <laughs> I had to ask what beer he had. <laughs> so, oh, I already ordered a Negro. 
Yes, I know. I just have Negroni. Okay, Aperol Spritz? Aperol Spritz, yes. Yeah. So uh, this this um, particular bar is a bit lacking. <laughs> now, in general, uh, it's a very pretty bar. So uh, sometimes, in, I assume maybe in super touristy areas, they're just gonna have very simple uh, menus in terms of beer. But generally, you have uh, maybe one or two French beers, and then um, generally a lot of these bars or braceries, um, you can just sit down and also they have usually full. Um, you can get any cocktail in that sense. Merci. Monsieur? Ah, voila. <laughs> Merci. Uh, so you can generally get any cocktail. And here in this case, since it's a really full area, they give you the check immediately, which is nice. You can just pay or you can just leave the money on the table. And then um, Maurice, welcome. So feel free to ask me any questions as I enjoy Aperol Spritz. In this case, they didn't have, it seems, the full ingredients for the Negroni. Maybe they have the gin, maybe they have the Campari. Part is kind of necessary for a Negroni, uh, so that might be the reason, but that's rare. Generally, you can order a Negroni anywhere, and what really surprises me is that you can order a mojito almost anywhere in Paris. It's hard to order a mojito in the US, and even my native Puerto Rico, uh, not every bar has um, the ingredients for a mojito, but here, generally, you can order a mojito. So maybe I'll show you that next time, but cheers. Good classic Aperol spritz. Aperol and some Prosecco. And oh my god, how is this bus doing? Janice says any bar should have Campari. I, I agree. Um, the place is lacking. But that's okay. Worst case scenario, you can or always order a wine. Uh, and generally in France, there'll be great wine everywhere. I just don't feel like drinking wine. Ken is sponsoring the the uh, Aperol Spritz, thank you so much, Ken, everyone. That's some serious driving, says uh, Expire Life, yeah. And um, the total is only going to be 950 euro. Half the price nowadays in New York City. Touristy areas or not, it's extremely expensive nowadays in New York City. The, the cheapest Aperol Spritz you can get sometimes is certain happy hours is like $14. Jan says your face when you saw that bus. Oh, no. oh, you doing? And they give me nuts. Oh yeah, I go nuts for nuts.
Braun says that used to be that was the uh, Northern Irish driver, the Belfastian driver that we encountered. Camilla says, "Lucky more lucky waiter." You know, um, you see the service is pretty nice. Um, so you notice that I I said bonjour immediately. Don't hesitate. You see the waiter, just say bonjour. Say hello. Uh, and say it in French, even if you don't know too much French. Since I don't know too much French, I said bonjour, immediately went over and said, uh, um, and spoke in English. So, bonjour, you start off at the right foot. If you don't acknowledge someone, if you're entering a bar or a restaurant, that's where you start getting rude service. And they're not going to be super intensive here. They're just going to let you be. So the guy's not going to ask me, hey, the drinks are okay? He's not going to do that. You just chill. Yeah, you can take your sweet time drinking this. I'm not because I want to, to show you one more book. You can sip on this for an hour if you wanted to while reading and enjoying the beautiful chansons of this busker over here. Joe says, can you drive to the UK? Yeah, there's two routes. You can go via the, the tunnel. I'm not sure how driving works in the tunnel. Do you actually drive or do they put your car on the train? Let me know how it works. And then the other way is um, is via ferry, where you can also board your car, as far as I know, on the ferry. Do you notice, if, uh, do you notice any changes in Paris over the years? It's cleaner, much cleaner. I came here 10 years ago for the first time, it was dirty. drive onto a train and then go on the channel. Thank you so much, Ken, for clarifying. I appreciate that. Try to at least say hello in French. Really appreciate the effort. Says Maurice. Yeah, yeah. Bonjour, bonsoir. Uh, is really appreciated. Bella says the music is a vibe. Yes, that's why. Who cares if they have a French beer? It's, it's worth it. Donald says, I'm glad you're not sunburned. I was concerned. <laughs> I don't think people have watched... Many people have not watched my videos much. I get read very easily from a, a host of factors. And I'm 100% healthy. Donald, welcome. I was in Paris for the first time after 9-11. Wow, how was that? That must have been intense. Maurice is clarifying, yeah, when you say, to say have a good day, have a great day or have a good day. It's a bon journée and have a good evening means bon soirée. So that's that's the that's what you say leaving. Uh, or you could just simply say ambienton, which means see you later, or, or uh, au revoir, which means goodbye. Sometimes people say twice. Oh wow! Oh wow! Let's die. Pigeons are, ladies and gentlemen, look who has joined us. Bob is taking a break from his acting duties and he wants a peanut. Well, in order not to get kicked out of the restaurant, I'm not going to indulge Bob, the thespian now, here in Paris. Naboul, welcome to the broadcast. Bonjour. How are you doing, Naboul? Enchanted says, have you been to the South of France? Yes. Uh, last year. Check out my live videos. I have a whole host of live videos from all around Europe. 
Uh, I spent most of my trip last year in France. Uh, so I covered Paris, Chartres nearby in Paris, uh, Nice, and all the towns around Nice, including Monaco as well, uh, and uh, Aise, and Caen. And then I also covered Provence, covered a lot of areas around Provence, the wine country of Provence, and I cover Avignon, uh, the medieval city. I cover Lyon, uh, which is another beautiful medieval city, it's gorgeous. Highly recommend going to Lyon. Uh, great for food as well. Donald says it's Robert, <laughs> the Pigeon. Is Bob a guest artist in this live stream? Indeed he is. Indeed he is. Uh, a big trick says, I was here in 1995. I was also on Jim Morrison's resting place in Père Lachaise. Great city in Paris, yes. MZ says, yeah, that's right. I remember those luxury yachts. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Andrew, yeah, yeah. We Merci, merci beaucoup. Beautiful music. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have to stop now that yeah. uh, maybe there is some other musician who can take my place. Oh, really? Really? Okay, okay. How long do you play? Uh, how much time do you usually play? Uh, not more than half an hour. Half an hour. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> have a good day. And that was the busker. Uh, Coop says, have I gone to Anis Anisi? Um, no, I have not been to Anisi. I think I passed it, yeah, when I was going from Lyon to Chamonix. And lastly, I did go to Chamonix. I also went to Saint-Tropez uh, with Neboul. He gave me an awesome private tour of uh, Saint-Tropez, which was amazing. Uh, so I highly recommend it. Does Paris uh, inspire you to write a book, says Inspire Life? Inspires me, yes, to write a sci-fi movie. Uh, I always envision having a sci-fi movie set in Paris. It's starting to rain. Uh -oh. Judy says, all my favorite places. Oh, so, cool. so glad. That's awesome to hear. All right, feel free to ask me any questions as I finish this, and then we're going to continue walking around through Montmartre, enjoying the beautiful sights of this gorgeous area of Paris as it's starting to drizzle here. James says, I really enjoy watching the video from Pont du Gard. Is Pont du Gard in Lyon? Do remind me. And Janice, I see here. Maria says it's a rainy day in London. Oh no, it's raining on the coronation. That's so sad. Didn't, didn't uh, Queen Elizabeth, when she got coronated, had rainbows popping up everywhere? Susie says I'm out of questions. Christine asked, when did I get to France? Now, a week ago. Because says, where are you going to have dinner? Are you going to have dinner? I am going to have dinner uh, with family and a family friend later today.
Matrix says, well, you go up the stairs of St. Uh, a Sacred Core, the line was too immensely long. Uh, and I remember there was not good cell phone reception inside the Sacred Core. So, uh, not this time around. All right, that was a lot of fun. Give me the change. It was total 950 euro. People usually don't give tip. Uh, you can if you want to. If the service was super exceptional, then yeah. Otherwise, let's continue browsing around. <laughs> Lucy says, a long time no see. Thank you so much for tuning into the live video, Lucy. I appreciate you. So this is the <laughs> this is the 40 bus. You can actually take this, go all the way <laughs> through the streets of Montmartre. Brian says, great to see you recent live. So thank you so much, Brian. Wow. Oh. <coughs> Someone mentioned the, the windmills. We found them. So here we see two bistros. I would guarantee you that they are pretty damn good food here in paris in general is pretty good everywhere and then uh i think according to french law they have to tell you if uh the food is fresh or not and if it's uh homemade or or pre-cooked so generally i think in the menus you'll see a little star and that's what we'll tell you but here example
So you can see that the prices are fairly reasonable for such a major tourist center here in Paris. Um, in New York, they'll probably be about $10 more than what you see. Nibun says, yeah, they have to mention it. Yeah, thank you so much, Nibun, for clarifying. They have to mention whether it's homemade or not. MZ says, that was the M4 that you just saw that goes to the cloisters. <laughs> this, is not New this is not New York. Someone earlier asked me, New York can't compare. And then New York has unique stuff happening but here just as we did have a drink and admire the what they call in, in know how to say it in french i forgot who saw coined that term as one of those artists in the 1920s but in new york we really don't get that you know you've seen my videos of eating outdoors there's been very few times i've ate outdoors where it was a calm environment generally sirens and noise and crazy people screaming um that you don't get here in paris it's, it's such a pleasure to sit down and relax and enjoy a nice drink or coffee and also the fact that these restaurants don't rush you uh, it's a great benefit that you can't really experience in New York. There's not really many places you could just sit down and chill. However, New York, on the other hand, has such unique neighborhoods that Paris does not have. Paris, as I do when hanging out in New York. In New York, you know you're in the East Village as opposed to the West Village. You know you're in Midtown as opposed to the Upper West Side. the prices here so here they have like a prefix menu 40 euro that is entree uh that that means a appetizer entree and dessert entree here means appetizer so don't get confused so you get three course meal for only 40 euro i say only because it's much cheaper than the u.s in new york specifically Beautiful restaurant. And the cocktail, the cocktail of the house is only 12 euro. Look at dollars. La Mer says uh, New York is too expensive. Yes, way too expensive. I, I don't even like it anymore. Like uh, in terms of eating out. This is no longer a pleasure uh, with the amount of money to spend. La Mer, La Mer says, uh, La Mer says Paris used to be cheaper. Yeah, inflation has hit everywhere, especially Europe and North America. Let me know for anyone tuning in. But yeah, inflation has hit, hit everywhere, but not as hard as it has in New York. New York, the prices are obscene. Only other place I've seen prices more obscene than New York has been uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen, that's it. Uh, Stockholm was okay. So yeah, here you'll spend a fraction eating out. And that is a Michelin rated restaurant. And it's only four euro for three courses. Great deal. And the thing is, you know, when it comes to eating out, there's a limit in my opinion. There's an upper limit of where for the food that you're getting. Hey, a lot. A lake says true freedom. We have regained here. Of Paris. 
people. Oh, no, this is a coffee shop. This is a very full coffee shop. So now and now we have more and more um, coffee shops in Paris. This is called La Cinq Marche. Susie says, where are we going to eat dinner? No, that was a coffee shop. I, was, I wanted to get a coffee to go, but um, too much of a wait. So while like the coffee shop has come in more and more into Paris, it's not still yet quite like America, uh, where you order at the counter, either sit down or take it to go. They generally sit down places. Uh, to go is still rather rare, though you can now order to go. It's called apate, rather than uh, surplus, which means to stay. So, if you're waiting for a coffee, generally you have to like hail a server or see if you can get to the counter to ask for a coffee to go, and you can pay. Uh, and they'll charge you a little bit less than they would if you were to have it to stay. But it's not like in America where generally coffee is just generally sold to go in most coffee shops. Alex says, am I meeting a french fry in Paris again? No, I'm not in contact with them at the moment. So no, I am not meeting a french fry in Paris. Uh, can you find decaf coffee in cafes? MZ asks an excellent question because while in America, decaf is not as um, available and other parts me like in Italy isn't really available. Here, decaf is generally available everywhere. Uh, and that's why you see usually Parisians having a coffee even late night uh, after they have their meal. They're still sipping a coffee at the end. And it's because a lot of them actually order a decaf. So it's, it's not like Italy where it's always caffeine. In America, sometimes, caf sometimes decaf, not all times. But here, almost everywhere you can order decaf and it's awesome. And they're all pretty, pretty good. Oh, I hear thunder. There's a statue with nice assets. Or he says that's Dalida. Who's Dalida? I remember seeing her last year. I didn't quite learn about her.
It's so thoughtful of the sculptor to make her blouse look a little bit lighter in color. So thoughtful of him to do so. Because of course, it's not like thousands upon thousands of people have touched her assets. No, of course not. It's lighter metal on purpose, right? 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 Though I must say that Dalida is no Molly Malone from Dublin. <laughs> Check out my Dublin videos if you want to learn more about Molly Malone. Another very beautiful statue in the middle of Dublin. Hey, Matrix says, uh, yeah, there's probably to-go coffee kiosks. You know, I haven't seen too many, too many in Paris. In the very heavy touristy areas, yeah, there's a little bit more, but in general, I haven't seen too many to-go coffee kiosks. London has way more. Here we see what appears to be a medieval house. That's cool. You know, Paris is a medieval city, but we barely see any medieval architecture because most of it was torn down in the mid 1800s, which with the redesign of George Eugene Hausman by Napoleon III. So this is a rare sight right over here. See a medieval, well, it appears to be a medieval building. It most likely is. I doubt someone in the past hundred years went through the turmoil to make a stone building in medieval style. Probably would have been very expensive to do it in the modern day. I wonder what it is today. There's a symbol of a bird wearing a crown. MZ says, would you rather live in London or in Paris? I prefer London for living long term. I can't deny that Paris is a gorgeous city to live in as well. London is a bit more my jam. A, I know English, it's wonderful. Uh, and B, it's nice that uh, I personally really, really adore English culture, but Paris is perfectly beautiful and serene. Here we have a hint of what this was, though I can't make out what it means. Poe Man says, "Ist das Berlin?" No, this is. I don't know my German, but no, this is not Berlin, this is Paris. 
Here's uh, the more insta famous restaurant, La Maison Rose, the red house or the pink house. MZ says, thank you for your answer. I can't, I haven't been Lon to London yet, so I can't compare. I hope you do manage to go to London. It's one of the most visited cities in the world, and I think it's still underrated. I think it should be even more famous. Camilla prefers Paris over London. Yes, let us know. What's your favorite city of these two arch rivals in Europe? Or Fremenines? We found a little Smurf. Party Shark says, I, I was convinced I saw you earlier at the U Square Farmer's Market. And when I approached to say hi, I probably pretended I was looking at the goat cheese next to the guy. <laughs> so it's Party Shrake. Yeah, that was me. Why didn't you say hi? Party Shrake. They're very rude of you. Very, very rude. Um, I have the power to teleport, so. I was earlier at Union Square Farmer's Market and decided to come here for the afternoon in Paris. is coming. Wow. Who would love to have that Parisian backyard? Let me know. Mater says, I bet you can, um, I bet you can uh, drop Ariel off in any country and he fit in nicely. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Mater, yeah. Well, there are limits. I haven't been to Asia yet, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to fit in in parts of Asia at the moment. Mr. A says, what a dream to spend time reading a book in the Parisian Bistro as a storm is incoming. That does sound rather heavenly. Ah, here we got the Musée de Montmartre. The Museum of Montmartre. Let me know if it's worth it. 
And here we have the trolley ride. I think I rode this last year. If anyone remembers, do let me know. Uh, it is worth it. Maurice says, I think he would stick out in Tokyo. Yes, I, I'm a bit tall. So, you know, stick out like a sore thumb in Tokyo. Meta says, have I been to Japan? No, not yet. I want to though. Once Japan takes away the mask mandate, I think I will go. Hey, Party Shack says, what what resources do you use to learn about the secrets of a uh, city? There is a great series of books called uh, Secret Name of the City. So Secret Paris, Secret New York, Secret Brooklyn, Secret London, Secret Edinburgh. It's made by Young Liz Publishing. Great, great series of books. Uh, they have basically all the major secrets. Another resource is Atlas Obscura. It's a website. They also have an app. And it's an awesome resource to learn all, also, every secret there is. And then just generally looking, researching online, just type in the name of the neighborhood or the name of the landmark, secrets. Generally in Western Europe and in North America, I found that there's plenty of articles about places. In uh, places where, like in Spain, it was a bit trickier because Spain, um, like for example, Madrid, there was a lot of articles in English about the main sites, but the moment you start going to the other neighborhoods, there really wasn't any, that many resources in English. So I had to find resources in Spanish. Luckily I know Spanish. Uh, so I, I don't know how being countries much more foreign than Europe might be a bit more tricky. So here we see one of the iconic views of Montmartre. Susie says, am I near Passage Coton? No, that would be on the other side of Montmartre right now. I showed it last year. You could rewatch that older video. Let's see, I forgot the history of this place. Bill 19... The park was built in 1931. How old is the tower? park why is this why is this park so empty for being such a visited area oh because there's a lot of those little tiny bugs you can't see them on camera but here in Paris there's a much more than in New York those tiny little bugs that kind of hang out in swarms together Kay says, are you taking any opportunity to masticate? If you want to see my video about food, check out my previous video I did right before this one. I, uh, oh wow, butterfly, gorgeous.
Hey, Ronald says, I just wanted to pop in and say hi on Facebook. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in, Ronald. Marie says, there's a wall of graffiti nearby. Oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, this is a nice... Meta says, uh, med doesn't mean good luck. No, med means uh, shit. <laughs> Though it's a popular word that you'll see in, in souvenirs here in uh, Paris. Okay, says it looks like a cleaner Manhattan. Paris is definitely cleaner than the average area in New York. Uh, Paris used to be a bit more grimy or grungy when I came here 10 years ago. A lot of people definitely had that um, impression when coming to New York. And Maurice says it's called the Wall of Love. The Wall of Love is further down. It's down the stairs. Uh, so yeah, I know what you're talking about. Nina says, why can't New York be as clean as well? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. I have no idea. Uh, it's getting better uh, day by day in New York. So here we see actual real gargoyles. The gargoyles are meant to be functional, not just decorative. If they're just merely decorative, they'll be called grotesques, at least officially. And gargoyles are meant to gargle the water out from the rooftops. Hence the word gargoyle. They're water spouts, decorative water spouts in essence. Thanks for our life says I love hearing the the birds in the background. Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Okay, just like life, everything is circular. So we're going to end close to where we began at Sacre Coeur. Let me know if you have any last questions. I hope you enjoyed these Paris live streams. This is Charlie passing through. Um, here was an adventure through Montmartre. Beautiful Montmartre, easily to walk around. And uh, gorgeous. Eric says, just send me $10 on PayPal. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the $10 um, contribution on PayPal. Uh, Susie says, where are you dining tonight? I am dining somewhere. <laughs> I won't announce it, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have uh, dinner with a uh, family and a family friend.
So the line, uh, a few people have asked about going in Sacre Coeur. Line is very long, so I won't be able to go Sacre Coeur at the moment in order to save 30 minutes of boredom. <laughs> Waiting to go right in. Two thousand two hundred, two thousand two hundred stars. So stay tuned. Ron, don't don't let people know uh, where I'm going next. Mika says, Merci beaucoup. My pleasure. So I forgot to mention it earlier, but this is where the last uh, major battle happened in John Wick 4. I highly recommend watching that movie if you have the opportunity to do so, even if you haven't watched the other ones. It is a fun blast. I hope you enjoyed this live video around wandering. Dedicate most of the day to it because. Um, there's stuff here to do. There's a little museum as well. Uh, there's probably a few good eateries off the beaten path. So I highly recommend it. And right here, one more time, the views of Padi. I'll step over here, show you a little bit elevated view. Wow, stunning. There are fewer people now than in the summer, says Coop. Yep, get ready. In July, it will be madness here. I actually, I'm glad I'm here in May and not July. Because uh, Paris is already now back in full swing. Unlike uh, last year, where there were still not as many tourists. See you next week, Friday, Saturday, 9 a.m. New York City time. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. And Bronk Man loves tuning into my shorts and he just left a super chat $5 and said, stay curious, my friends. Yes, indeed. Have a great day, everyone. Mina says, well, Ariel find romance this time with her, so who knows? <laughs> Au revoir, mes amis.